Now we've been through the left upper quadrant, the left lower quadrant, we even talked about the right lower quadrant. We're going to talk about the right upper, but there's three conditions that are general, meaning the patients are going to present with general abdominal pain, and you as a student always confuse these on the exam. These three conditions are as follows, ischemic colitis, mesenteric ischemia, and chronic mesenteric ischemia. They all sound the same. It's like the right upper quadrant, cola this, cola that, cola what? Well the same thing here, you have three conditions that all sound the same, but present very differently. The first is known as ischemic colitis. Now, when you think about ischemic colitis, I want you to think of the following term. Low flow. Low flow means ischemic colitis. Here's what's going on. You have your bowel wall. Your bowel wall is here. Your mucosal layer is inside. In any state in which the patient becomes hypovolemic, classically, in an elderly patient, they become hypovolemic with a little nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. They lose perfusion. Now, the vessels to the bowel wall go from outside through the bowel. So when the patient becomes hypovolemic, they temporarily hypoperfuse the bowel. And what happens is the part that's furthest away dies, the mucosal layer. So what they'll say is, something happened, they don't even know it, they were nauseous and vomiting, they had tons of diarrhea, and then all of a sudden, in ischemic colitis, number one, they have cramping. The cramping pain they experience is the actual hypoperfusion to their colon. And where is it occurring? In their watershed area. It's classically in the splenic flexure and in the rectus, excuse me, in the sigmoid region. They're going to have cramping pain followed by bloody diarrhea. Now you're saying, well, why is it bloody? Well, what happens is because the actual mucosal layer has become hypoperfused, do you know what it does? <clears throat> it dies. It dies and it sloughs off. And so the patient will notice several hours after having this cramping abdominal pain, they present with bloody diarrhea. This is known as ischemic colitis. Colitis means an inflammation of your mucosa. It's inflamed because it sloughed off because it died from ischemia. And that's all they present with. These patients require supportive care. IV fluids to maintain perfusion, antibiotics in case they have an elevated white count and develop fevers, and just watchful waiting. Diagnostics can be done in two methods. The best initial test can be a CAT scan. It will show inflammation of the colon and a colitis. A colonoscopy, which may not be totally indicated because this can just be treated empirically, However, colonoscopy with biopsy will show a mucosal inflammation consistent with ischemia. However, none of those things are necessarily actually required. Simple treatment from history and physical will tell you exactly what to do for this patient. The next condition, number two, is mesenteric ischemia. Now, mesenteric ischemia, mesenteric ischemia is classically going to be a patient who presents with the sudden onset of such severe abdominal pain that they're complaining of 10 out of 10 abdominal pain. They're writhing in their stretcher in the emergency room, rolling over. They can't get comfortable. But as soon as you go to examine them, you cannot elicit any pain. And so a lot of times you're thinking, well, what's going on here? You'll notice in their history in patients with ischemia, uh, mesenteric ischemia, they have a fib. What's happened is this. In their state of atrial fibrillation, they flung off a clot from the atrium and it went all the way around the arch of the aorta, zipping down. And they went ahead and they passed a few vessels, the celiac axis, and right ahead of them they see the superior mesenteric artery, and they get into the superior mesenteric artery, and they, uh, the clot is wedged in there. You've just myocardially infarcted, analogous to that at least. You've basically had a bowel attack. It's analogous to an actual heart attack. You've infarcted your bowel. What you're going to do is your best initial test for these patients is going to be an x-ray. It's going to show air in the bowel wall, and the Treatment is going to be both diagnostic and therapeutic. Here's what's going to happen. X-ray is going to show air in the bowel wall. Angiography is going to be diagnostic. Angiography is going to be diagnostic because it's going to actually show where the clot is. And then you're going to go ahead and use local vasodilators and then uh, you know, a clot bluster known as TPA to open up that vessel. However, if the patients present exactly the same severe abdominal pain in the setting of AFib, they probably have mesenteric ischemia and it's been so long that lactate levels have elevated and these patients actually have dead gut and there's a consideration that they're actually having dead gut because lactates are going up, white counts are going up, they become hemodynamically compromised, then surgical intervention to remove the area of dead bowel is indicated. There's a high mortality when we get to that point. 
The last condition is chronic mesenteric ischemia. Chronic mesenteric ischemia, as mesenteric ischemia was considered to be the heart attack of the gut, chronic mesenteric ischemia is angina of the gut. What's basically happening to these patients is every time they eat, the bowel wants more blood. Every time the heart races, it wants more blood. And what happens when you have constricted coronaries? You get pain. What happens when you have constricted abdominal vessels and you eat and you're exercising your gut? You get pain. These patients are gonna complain of chronic pain after they eat, significant weight loss from anorexia because you're scared of eating, and they're going to have in their history hypertension, diabetes, smoking. They're gonna be a vasculopath. In these patients, you want to optimize their vessels, and if they require it, you can put them on aspirin and different medications, try to control their cholesterol, get them to stop smoking, but they may require angiography and stenting to open up specific vessels. We try medical therapy first, however. Now we're going to move on to our epigastrum.